Hey folks, my name is Nate Salzman. I'm with Jefferson Patterson Park. Today we're going to be doing archaeology, but not just any kind of archaeology. We're going to be doing what's called experimental archaeology. Experimental archaeology is when archaeologists have a question about how something was done or how something was created, and then they actually try to take the tools and technology of those people and try to do it. They try to recreate it themselves and learn a little bit more about the process. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So our big question that we're trying to answer is, how did the Native Americans cut their hair before metal tools. Now I say before metal tools because metal tools are relatively recent for a Native American culture. The metal tools really only come along when colonists and Europeans bring them over. So before that, they're using all sorts of other things to cut their hair. So now that we have our question, we now have to try and figure out an answer. And the first place that we as archaeologists are going to start is by looking at the archaeological record. We're going to look and see what things Native Americans left behind to help us try and figure out maybe some possibilities for what they were using. And when we think about cutting tools of Native Americans, the big thing that comes to mind is stone tools. A lot of us in our heads have these pictures of beautiful stone arrowheads or stone knives, and those tools do an amazing job of cutting. The problem, however, is those tools, their edges are really, they're, they're serrated. They're more like a saw. And I can tell you from personal experience using these tools, if you were to try and cut something like hair with a stone knife, you're probably more likely to pull the hair out than you are to actually cut it. Trying to cut your hair with a stone knife would probably be about equivalent to trying to cut your hair with a hacksaw. So you, you'd have to be a pretty tough person to be willing to, to let your hair get cut that way. So from our archaeological record, we really don't find an option that seems very plausible. So we're going to have to look in a different spot than, than we normally would. In fact, what we're going to look at today and where we're going to get a lot of our information from is from a primary source. We're going to actually look at a text written by a European about the Native Americans. And he's a European that came by right at the point of contact. So right when the colonists were first getting here, before there was a lot of trade, and so Native Americans were still using a lot of, a lot of their, their pre, pre-metal tools. And this colonist is actually somebody you might be familiar with. That gentleman right there is John Smith. To historians, John Smith is sort of a question mark. He has a lot of material with really interesting tidbits of information, but the problem is that he tends to embellish quite a bit. So just because John Smith says something doesn't necessarily mean it's true. But we're going to be taking a look at some of John Smith's texts and seeing if it can help us sort of come up with a hypothesis for how Native Americans cut their hair. We're going to be taking a look at John Smith's General History of Virginia. I chose this text because I know there's at least one time where they talk about Native Americans and how they cut hair. In fact, John Smith actually mentions grating the hair. So we're going to actually take a look through this text and see if we can find where exactly he does that. So we're going to do a quick word search for the word grate. And here's our little blurb about how they cut their hair. John Smith says, the men wear half their hair, half their beards shaven, the other half long. For barbers, they use women who with two shells grate away their hair of any fashion they please. The women are cut in many fashions agreeable to their years, but ever some part remaineth long. So this is a phenomenal little bit of information right here. This actually basically gives me my hypothesis. Um, I could say Native Americans used shells to cut their hair. However, I want to get a little more information before I go and actually try this experiment out. One of my big questions is, what, sh what kind of shells are they using? And so in order to do that, I'm actually going to key in on that word shell. I'm going to actually do a search through the text to see where else John Smith talks about shells, maybe get some more information about how they were used. However, I can't just type in shell as we think of it and be done with it. And that's because if you take a look at the word shell here, you'll see it's actually spelled differently than the way modern people spell it. That's because spelling wasn't standardized at, this, at that time. So in order for me to actually look up about shells, I have to think of through every different kind of spelling of shell and search each one. And not just shell, but also different, different kinds of shells. So I'm going to have to look up all the different spellings of oyster, different spellings of mussel, and I'm also going to do a word search for hair as well. And this is going to hopefully give me every last little bit of information I can about how they're cutting their hair. All right, so I'll come back to you with what I find shortly. All right, we're back. And after all that searching, I did, in fact, find some more information. I found out that they're using mussel shells for 
their tools. So that's a great piece of information. All right, so now that I have all this information, I can really start to answer my question of how did Native Americans cut their hair before they had metal tools? Um, and I can come up with a pretty strong hypothesis, which is that they used muscle shells to cut their hair. So now that I know, and now that I have a hypothesis, I actually have to test it out. But before I can test it, I have to gather my materials. I'm going to be looking to grab, one, a muscle shell, two, a second muscle shell that I'm going to sharpen just to compare and see how well each one works, and then obviously I'm going to need some hair to actually cut. So now that I have my list, I'm ready to actually go out, grab materials, get started. This right here is the last shell we need, so now we can go back, back inside, get everything sharpened up. So now that we have our tools made up, now the last thing we need is somebody to test it on. So I'm right here with Caitlin. She has volunteered to let me give her a haircut. Are you ready for your, for your trimming? Sure. And our first trimming is going to be with our just plain old muscle shell that we haven't done anything to. That's enough. Yeah. All right. So, feeling anything? No. All right, unsuccessful. And this is our last one. This is our oyster shell with our finest edge. Oh man, look at that. You can actually see through the shell. It's so thin. Oh wow, that's really fast. Yeah, that's zipping right through it. Check that out. That's a lot of hair. <laughs> that's pretty crazy. All right, Caitlin, so now that we trimmed your hair, um, I just have a couple of quick questions for you. So can I be your barber from now on? No. <laughs> take forever. <laughs> it probably would. And the, the thing that I say about as you were cutting is I was wondering how long it takes before that shell gets dull. Mm. You know, if you have to yeah. resharpen it as you're going. But I gotta say, I was really surprised. I mean, we got a little, a little chunk of her hair still. And that did a, a surprising job. Hey folks, I just thought I'd do a quick recap because we basically did an entire, pro the entire process of experimental archaeology. We started with a question, how did Native Americans cut their hair before they had metal tools? And in order to answer that question, we actually did research, right? We started by taking a look at what the archaeological record had for possible tools. Looking at those stone tools, we noticed that they're pretty serrated and wouldn't have done a good job for the task at hand. So rather than just stop there and say, oh, Native Americans must have struggled with cutting hair, we actually went to primary sources to answer it. We took a look at John Smith's General History of Virginia. And in that text, we found some great information about how Native Americans may have cut their hair. John Smith mentions that they might have used muscle shells to cut their hair. However, just because John Smith says it doesn't mean that it's true. So we have a working hypothesis, which is that Native Americans used muscle shells to cut hair. And in order to answer that hypothesis, we actually had to do an experiment. We had to try it out. So we grabbed some muscle shells, sharpened them up, and then proceeded to actually try and cut some hair with it. Which was pretty cool, but also a little bit terrifying for Miss Caitlin there. To me, the most astounding part of this is that it actually worked, that it was successful. And this is something that I wouldn't have thought until I tried it out. So by doing this experiment, it gave us a lot of good information to the possibilities for how Native Americans cut their hair. But to me, what's more important is why this matters. Why does doing experiments like this matter? And first and foremost, I'd like to start with the obvious reason, which is it's fun. If you told me before doing this experiment that you could cut hair with oyster shells, I would not have believed you. It was very interesting doing it. And I got to say, I got a kick out of knowing that I could become a barber with nothing but two shells. The next reason why it's so useful to do these experiments is because it actually helps archaeologists to know what to look for. 
By doing these experiments, we can take a look and see what these sharpened shells look like. Right here we have a midden pit, and these middens are full of shells. So by knowing what the shells to look for are that might be used for tools, it helps archaeologists to actually find these tools versus just finding general garbage. Um, so yeah, it actually helps archaeologists with knowing what to look for and knowing how things work. It also helped us to understand our source a little bit better. By doing this test and knowing that John Smith isn't full of baloney, it helps give a little credence to John Smith here and there. So at least in the future when I'm looking at his text, I might, I might give a little more credence to something that I would have normally thought was preposterous. So that helps me as a historian to better understand my, my material. And finally, and I would say most importantly, is that this actually helps us to understand history. When Europeans come along with those metal trade tools, it's a very big deal, and we know that. But we don't understand how much these trade items really actually affect day-to-day -day life without trying their alternative. By not understanding, if you don't understand how Native Americans' older technology works, then you don't understand how big of a deal it is to get something like a metal knife. Really, this helps us to better understand the story of, of Native Americans and their contact with Europeans. If you enjoyed this video, thank you so much and stay active, but also stay safe.